In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can generate a Gaussian splat and render it using V-Ray. First, we'll start by creating a 3D Gaussian splat from 2D images or video and export it into its appropriate file format. Next, we'll take it to 3ds Max, where we'll create a Gaussian geometry object and integrate additional assets to render together with the Gaussian splat. After that, we will set up a camera fly-through and render our final sequence. So let's get started. Gaussian splatting is a method used for creating a 3D scene from images or videos. It requires several different images of an object taken from different angles. The more images or video footage we have, the better result we can get. The images are blended together to produce a detailed, three-dimensional representation of the object. Instead of a traditional 3D scene made of a collection of meshes, a Gaussian splat represents the scene as a type of point cloud. There are several softwares that can be used to generate a Gaussian splat. Today we will use a software called PostShot. You can visit its website, download, and install it. Once inside the software, we need to provide it with either multiple images or a video. I'm going to use video drone footage of a cityscape. The video is shot with a relatively wide angle lens and covers a big area. It also rotates around, which will help us get data from different angles. I'll just drag and drop it inside PostShot, and this window pops up. From here, we can experiment with different training configurations, which will produce different end results. Let's go for the default settings, which produce a decent result. The training process will take some time to compute, so let me skip to the part where it is complete. Once finished, we can inspect the result from all angles. We can also increase the splat scale parameter, which makes the visibility of the splats in the viewport much better. If there are too many artifacts, we can compute another take with different training configuration settings. For this tutorial, this is the result. The software also lets us create and animate cameras, which we can export and use in an external software. We can create our camera within 3ds Max later. So, for now, let's just export the Gaussian splat only. We can do so by choosing Export Splat Model from the File drop-down menu. We can simply name the file and click Save. Next, we can jump to 3ds Max and use that file to load up the Gaussian splat we just created. In the Geometry tab, we need to select V-Ray from the drop-down menu and then create a V-Ray Gaussian Geometry object. The first thing we need to do is to load the file we exported earlier. Depending on where we've exported the file from, the orientation might be different, just like in our case. We can check the flip axis option to display the object correctly. Great, we've successfully loaded our Gaussian splat scene. Since this scene is a part of a city, it'll be great to add a 3D asset to this city. Let's use one of the assets from Chaos Cosmos. Let's open up the Cosmos browser and import a building. I have imported one of the high-rise buildings which I think would fit the surrounding environment nicely. The building is in the correct scale, and it appears that our splats object is extremely small. Let's go ahead and adjust its size. We can use the scale parameter to increase or decrease the size of the Gaussian splats object. We can go back and forth with the scale until we are happy with the size. Now that we have the scaling all sorted out, let's start the interactive rendering. As you can see, even though there are no lights in the scene, the Gaussian splats object has all of its lighting baked into it. We can change the intensity if we need to. Since the splats object is not a real light source, the building we've placed in the scene is completely unlit. All we can see is some reflections in the glass from its surroundings. We can light it up in any way we'd like. So we can use the V-Ray sun and sky system, for example. I'll click on the sun icon from the V-Ray toolbar and drag in the viewport to create a sunlight source. It's way too bright, so I'll create a camera to correct the exposure. That looks much better. As you can see, the Gaussian splat object doesn't get a shadow from the building we've just added to the scene. We can fix that by creating additional geometry on all of the surfaces we need to receive a shadow, and make that geometry a shadow catcher. I'll just create one plane object for the ground underneath the building. And also, I'll use one more plane object for the building right next to it. We can spend the time to model more accurate versions for all of the objects that need to receive shadows. But for the sake of this tutorial, a plane would work just fine. Once we have all of the geometry in place, we can simply select it and click on the Shadow Catcher button located in the V-Ray toolbar. Let's start the interactive rendering and inspect the results. 
The additional building is casting shadows over the splat object now. We can adjust the shadow catcher planes if we need to, and we can also readjust the sun's position. Now that we have the lighting all set up, we can create a camera and animate a short fly through sequence. And that's how you can create a Gaussian splat and render it with V-Ray. I hope you find this helpful, and thanks for watching.